I've clicked the go live button. Um, so let's just give me a second to make that go live. I'm live on YouTube. So everyone on YouTube, hey, uh, there's probably no one on YouTube, but hey, but let's try. Um, so the basic premise here is everyone is going through this stuff. Um, we're all business owners or career people or doing things uh, that have been put under strain. Uh, a friend of mine, Rich Mulholland, uh, beautifully phrased this. Uh, prior to lockdown, everyone's anxiety levels were at a two, always at a two. Now everyone's anxiety levels are at an eight permanently. So anything that happens just tips us into a 10 out of 10 on the anxiousness and that makes us a little bit angry and a little bit aggressive with our partners and the people we're in lockdown with. So the premise behind the business stream is to bring people together that are all going through something very similar so that we can all talk about it. Um, I will have kind of basic agendas for every live stream uh, and obviously because the South Africa lockdown has been extended by a couple of weeks, um, I thought that what we should do is discuss um, things you could be doing in an extended lockdown to kind of prepare your business uh, for getting out of the lockdown. Um, it's unfortunate but expected that we were going to be in an extended lockdown. I think if business owners were planning for things to go back to normal on the 16th of April, that was a mistake. Um, I do, I think it's also important that I say that uh, a lot of the stuff I say is very dogmatic. Um, you don't have to agree with what I say, but it's nice for us to be able to engage and talk and just see what's out there. Um, so I think I'm going to kick off and go through a list of things that I think we could be doing as small business owners um, to try and help us prepare for when we get out of this. Um, I think a lot of us are very reactionary right now. Um, and I think that that's quite dangerous to wait and see because the truth is, hey, Chris, uh, Christopher, good to see you. It's been a while. Um, I think the truth is no one really knows. And the two things that I'm quite excited about uh, in this lockdown and in this um, time that we've all been given is that we are all preparing for uncertainty and we're all learning how to be more adaptable. Um, I think that a lot of entrepreneurs and small business owners get into the tree thinking that I'm a tree, my roots are planted, this is the way it's gonna be, this is the way it's always gonna be. Um, and this world that we're in has kind of shaken that. We are absolutely not certain about anything. Uh, the next three to four weeks could change again. Uh, lockdown could be extended anymore. Um, you know, we just don't know. So I quite like the idea of the uncertainty and getting comfortable with that and not being reactionary, being proactive with your businesses. Um, so that's kind of what I think we need to focus on here is proactive steps um, that make you feel like you're not sitting on your hands while we're in this lockdown. Um, so we'll get to those shortly. I think that there is uh, something important to be said uh, for individuals personal health and well-being um, there is something i've been trying to help younger entrepreneurs understand i i can say this because i used to be this guy when i was 18 19 20 uh all the way through my late 20s i would work 18 hours a day seven days a week and think that that was acceptable uh, and it's this really weird thing that as i got into my 30s i started to realize that the truth is if you put yourself at the bottom of your priority list more than likely, you're going to be an asshole. You're going to be someone that no one wants to be around because you aren't going to be well rested. You aren't going to be eating well. You're not going to be training physically, being fit and healthy, and your mental health will be screwed. And the truth is we think that we're doing the best for our business by spending 18 hours a day, seven days a week, plowing into it and just focusing on that as if there's nothing else in the world. But we're rounded people, right? Uh, I find this a really interesting thing. Entrepreneurs and business owners, we think we're just business people. And when we get home, everything else just kicks in later. I don't believe that there is this work-life balance. I think it's about integration. I think that the more you put yourself at the top of the priority list, the more you're going to understand that, oh, I do need eight hours of sleep. And it's okay to get that eight hours of sleep because when I wake up, after having had a good eight hours of sleep, I actually feel fresh and I feel excited. And there isn't this like cloud hanging over everything I do. I'm not tired when I get up. So that's what I mean by put yourself at the top of your priority list. And I think that's what most business owners can do first in lockdown is start shifting your business thinking to how can I put myself in the middle, right? And I think that we think that that's selfish. And I think there's a difference between self-care, looking after yourself, 
and being selfish. You're not being selfish by getting eight hours of sleep. You're not being selfish by eating properly. And when I say eating properly, I mean like home cooked meals that aren't takeaways, that aren't made at Woolies in the little plastic things, just eating right. So let's just look at the four things I think that you need to put yourself at the priority list. It's really simple. You need to eat properly. You need to sleep properly. Super important to get some sleep. Anyone who tells you that you don't need at least four or five hours of sleep is lying. Um, I would say that there are certain people in the world who need four or five hours. I personally need eight. I am very grumpy if I don't get eight hours of sleep. So those are the first two. The second is physical health. You need to physically be able to sustain this impact that we're all going under. It's, it's very physically taxing to be an entrepreneur. And I don't think we give that enough value. Now, I remember my dad getting home after like a long 10, 12, 15 hour day and taking his shoes off and getting into the pool uh, and just like calming his feet down. Because physically he was under stress because he was up and down all day in his work. I never really understood that until I started running my own companies and then realized the physical impact of running a business. And then the last thing is mental health. Um, I think that that's quite a big one. I don't think that we attribute enough to this mental health issue. Um, I think especially, I hate saying this, but especially South African males, we do not like to admit that we have mental health problems. Um, I see a psychologist regularly to help me understand what's going on in my brain. And he's helped me immensely just to come to terms with all my shortcomings. Um, so those are the four things I think you need to start with in this lockdown, right? Is get yourself in order. Look after yourself first. Um, yesterday, I had one of those days, cabin feverish, didn't really want to talk to anyone, thought that everything I was doing was wasted, wasn't making enough money, I wasn't capitalizing on this lockdown. And when I realized that, I actually just stopped working and started watching TV. I went on to Netflix and took four hours off, watched two movies, um, had some wine for dinner, then moved on. Uh, that was the experience of lockdown. And that's okay. Um, that phrase that people keep repeating, never waste a good crisis. Bullshit. I hate that. You can waste this crisis if you want to. That's perfectly acceptable. You absolutely don't need to be killing it right now. You can be having shitty days. Um, so not seeing any questions. If you feel like asking a question, type it into the chat. Um, hit me up uh, if you want to discuss this in more detail. Um, but if there aren't any, I'm going to go down now into the things I think you can do uh, with your business while you're in lockdown. Um, obviously, there's video technology. So there's a lot of practical things that we can be doing in this lockdown to kind of help your business come out of it a little bit better. Uh, the first is... I think we need to analyze how long we think this dip is going to be. There is no way to know, right? Um, obviously, the dip is not going to end when the lockdown ends. Uh, I'm talking more about the economic dip that comes with this. Um, and the thing that we should be focusing on as small businesses is what that recovery curve looks like. The chances are the recovery curve isn't going to just shoot back up. And you're not going to get back to 100% on the 1st of May you're probably going to suffer quite significantly. So what you need to be looking at is the recovery curve. Is it going to ever get back up to 100%? Let's just assume 100% is December 2019, where you were firing and Christmas sales were good. Um, do you think that come the 1st of May, you're going to get right back up to just firing on all cylinders? No, absolutely not. That is unequivocally not going to happen. So you need to start figuring out, is it going to be a six-month recovery? Let's do this the other way. Is it going to be a six-month recovery? Or is it going to be a 12-month recovery? And when you do get back up to recovered, is it going to be 100% or 80% of where you were? And that's really important so that you understand how to start tooling your business. Because if you're only going to get back to 60% of your revenue, do you need 100% of your staff? Probably not. And so then you need to start looking at your staff. You need to start talking to them. And another thing that I think is great that's come out of this um, entire global pandemic is that talking to people has become okay. It's become okay to dial someone and they answer a video chat. It's become okay to sell with video. It's become okay to talk to your staff openly as a leader. Um, I, for years, have practiced something called radical candor. Um, I'll put it, in, put it in here, radicalcandor.com. Um, that, oh, that's not right. Uh, radicalcandor.com. There you go. Go check out that website. It's a really interesting method of communicating with your staff that can be summed up in the following way. To challenge directly, but care personally. So you're not lying to people. You're not 
softening the blow. You're telling them what you honestly feel, but you're being very cautious about how they are as humans. You care about them. So this kind of started to happen in the world of Corona. People care. How many times have people asked you, how are you? How's the lockdown? Like, what are you doing to stay sane? How's your staff? Instead of, hey, how are you, man? And not really listening to the answer. So I love that communication has become a thing. And I think that something you can do right now in this lockdown period is talk to your staff. And there's a lot of other things you should be talking to. You should talk to your staff openly more frequently. So if you're talking to them normally once a week, try and talk to them once a day and see what happens. Obviously, though, if you're a really shitty manager and you're talking to them to micromanage them, that's different. Don't do that. People are already thinking that they need to prove to you that they're going to be amazing so that they can keep their jobs. So don't talk to them with the auspices of trying to catch them out in something and see if they're at their desk and message them at lunch to see if they reply. That's the wrong kind of communication. We need open and frank communication that's transparent and radical in its nature. So talk to your staff and have empathy towards them because that goes along way. I think EQ is super important right now. And that applies to the next batch of people you should be talking to, right? You should also be talking to your customers. So on top of talking to your team who need their job, you also need to go, hey, customer, how are you? Engage with them at a human level. Get them to understand that you're also people behind this business because people like to back people. I don't believe that Nike is this thing that's ever going to die but it is filled with a whole bunch of people that might lose their jobs. So it's important that your customers understand that you're doing everything in your power to keep your business afloat so that when lockdown is over, they come back and you're still around. If you're not talking to your customers, I think you're missing an opportunity for them to build a real relationship with you, for you to create your thousand true fans and really nut into that deeply. So that's the second batch of people I think you should talk to. Then the final is the people you owe money to. I think it's super important that you are engaging with them. I think if you're hiding and trying not to talk to the people that you owe money for, for to, uh, that they're going to see that. I think running away from those people is worse than just being honest, because the truth is they're going through the same thing with the people they owe money. And this is this massive trickle down, right? So that if the big companies don't pay their suppliers, then their suppliers don't pay their suppliers and on and on and on. A friend of mine is owed four or 500,000 Rand for a job he did in December. And um, it's time that he now starts going legal and getting that money because it's not Corona relevant. He needs to go and get that money. But if he had just spoken to the people that owed him the money earlier and had said that this was going on, might not have ended here. So I think just be honest to the point where you feel comfortable. Don't obviously give away your entire books and you don't have to tell anything that makes you uncomfortable, but just call your suppliers again on a human level and say, hey, how are you? How is this treating you? I'm really sorry, I can't pay you. I'm doing the best I can. Um, we'll put a payment plan in place or something. So communication is super, super, super important. Um, one of the other things that I think is interesting, if we move now on to the next one, um, a friend of mine, Rich Mulholland, and I were talking about this, um, what businesses can do if they, they're closed and their businesses aren't essential services and they're not digital. Um, and he had a really good idea. He said that as people, so this is twofold, one as an individual and one as a company, as an individual, you should be looking at your skill set, the things that you can do. Not just the things that you do right now that make you money, but I have a guitar in the background, Am I good enough to do that uh, as a teacher online and make 500 Rand a lesson? Um, I can solve a Rubik's Cube. Does anyone want to learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube? Um, just write down all the things that you can do that might be able to make you money. As an individual, that could be a really interesting thing for you to experiment with uh, right now. And then as a business, I think it's important to do the same thing. So in preparation for getting out of lockdown and even while you're in lockdown, what is it that your business can do? Not what you do right now. There's a difference. What you do is what you've always done. And that's how you know you can make money. And it might be how you make money when the lockdown is over. But if you have a business that involves staff who might be designers and they only design things for you, well, can you quickly outsource them and get them to do design work for other companies in other countries all over the world? How do you retool your business for the next four weeks and potentially for the next four, five, six months that this lockdown might soften. It might take us that long to soften this lockdown. How do you retool your business? And look, again, if you're communicating with your staff and you're saying to them, hey, guys, 
What can we do? How do we make more money? What skills do you have? What is it that we can uh, extrapolate from what you do every day to help keep this business afloat so that you have a job when this lockdown is over? I think that if you've got the right people, then they're going to respond really positively to that. And I mean, listen, engaging with your staff is the other thing. Uh, while you're engaging with them, you're also going to realize which of them are worth keeping around. And that might sound brutal, but this is the brutal truth about what we're all experiencing as business owners. Either you have two or three staff who you're going to pay that aren't worth keeping and will drag your business down in the future, and they will they will actually drag your business down, or you're going to do the hard thing. You're going to get rid of them, give them a payout, uh, just retrench them because you have no choice, uh, and survive the business so that you can employ the best people. And this is the time. If, if right now you ever were worried about retrenching someone, now is the time. This is the perfect time to analyze your business, see the value, see the skills, and have a really real global reason to cut down the size of your business. So you need to start analyzing that, hey, if my staff can't work on their own and they can't work remotely and they're not good under this kind of pressure, maybe they're not right for my business. And maybe you need to start churning them and looking at what options you have. And I know that that sounds brutal, but we live in a brutal time, especially small businesses. Uh, I'm fundamentally concerned about the loss of life from the economic downturn, never mind from Corona. I think that we need to start thinking about keeping small businesses alive, even if it means cutting 50% of our staff so that we can hire them back in a year from now. If we get rid of businesses altogether, we're going to be in more trouble than, than anything else. So I think it's really important to look at all the skills you have internally in terms of staff, as well as what you can actually do to earn money. And then I think you need to start reviewing your business model and your revenue model. Um, as much as everyone is saying we're in a new world, I'm not fully convinced by that. I, I don't believe that we're only in a new world. I think that we are going to go back to normalcy before we go back to go forward to change. Um, I think in 12 months from now, we're going to be high-fiving, handshakes, and hugs. Um, I don't think too much is going to change. Um, for every one business I'm hearing who's getting rid of their offices, I'm hearing nothing from anyone else. There is no way in hell that Standard Bank and F&B and Investec are getting rid of their offices. There's no way in hell the Vodacom campus of four or 5,000 people will all of a sudden just disappear. It's never going to happen. So I don't think we need to plan for a new normal. I think we need to plan for when the new normal gets back to what it was, because it's going to take time. And for the last four or five weeks, I've been telling businesses to plan for a six to 12 month brutal period and then a 12 to 24 month ease back to normalcy. So I think we should be aiming at like an end of 2021, maybe beginning of 2022 for things to, to normal out. Now, what we need to do in the interim is look at our revenue model. If you are only a physical uh, outlet and you only sell a physical product, what can you do that's digital? Now is the time to experiment. There has never been a better time to experiment. You literally have nothing to lose. <laughs> I was speaking to my, my uh, mother-in-law last night. We did this big family uh, game thing. And um, she said, oh, you know, we only have our really nice wine bottles left and we don't know if we want to open them. Yeah, now. Now is the time to open the really nice wine. Now is the time to experiment. We are in a global pandemic where more than 206 countries are affected by this thing. So if you ever wanted to mix things up in your business, today is the day. Come Tuesday when this long weekend is over, go back to business and go, how else can we make money? Is this business unit as profitable as it used to be? And do we need to get rid of it? I'll give you an example. Philips is, uh, we all know Philips, the big brand. They've been retooling their business over the last while to focus on medical, uh, the medical uh, production of medical machinery. Uh, this little gap has made them accelerate those plans. They're selling and getting rid of any industry that isn't useful to them, apparently. Um, and I, I love that. I mean, it's brutal and it's hard, but the hard decisions are often the right ones when you're an entrepreneur. Um, I think if it's easy, everyone would be doing it. So I think you need to start looking at your revenue models, look at your business streams and start cutting out the fat. Anything that was something that's a little bit outdated, a little bit old, but still made you a little bit of profit, just chop it. And any team that's associated to that, either retool them and help them make more money for your business or get rid of them. And I know that that sounds brutal, but time is now to cut. So that's revenue models. Um, I also did, I wanted to touch on the government funding thing. I, 
there are so many funds out there and the incredible billionaires giving us their billions like the Ruperts and the Oppenheimers and Patrice Motepe and whoever else. Um, that's great. But our country is built off of small business. Uh, something like 80% of the people in South Africa are employed by small businesses. If you extrapolate those numbers out, we have got hundreds of thousands of small businesses and we have enough funding in these government government funds um, to maybe cater for a few thousand of them, maybe 10,000 at the most. And those are all filled. The applications are all in. So as, as intense as this is, no one is going to help your business. Our government is not going to fundamentally help your business because even if you do get selected to get some grant money to help you through this time, when will it arrive? How much cash on hand do you have? Do you have six months of salaries in your bank? Unlikely. It's more likely that you've got one month ahead of you. So that means you can pay salaries till the end of May. I can almost guarantee you that the government money is not going to come into your business before the end of May. No chance. So if that's what you're waiting for, I think you're in trouble. I think that the only kinds of people who are going to save you from bankruptcy are you. You're the only people available in your own business, you and your staff and your suppliers and your customers. That's why I started at the very beginning with talk to them. Don't be the typical South African with pride right out in front. Put your pride in your pocket and just be honest with people. Be transparent and be clear about the things that you're going through. Because I promise you now, waiting for a handout is not going to work. Our government and their funds are never, ever, ever going to make it in. And we all think that the best of people come out in times of crisis. Corrupt government is a corrupt government is a corrupt government. And I fundamentally believe that this government is corrupt. Sure, we have a nice leader in place now who can talk us through these uh, issues. But we've now got 3 billion rand in a fund that how do we know is going to be distributed effectively? Unlikely. If right now the grants can't be distributed effectively and they've been distributed for tens of years, I don't think this new fund is going to be distributed right. So do not bank on this kind of fund bailing your business out. I think what you should do is apply, but ignore it. Go, go through the trouble, take one day, apply for the funding that you think you need, and then just ignore that it exists. And it's a happy coincidence if it does. Um, so then I think T's and C's, yes, exactly. Simon, I think that the terms and conditions attached to these um, grants are not going to be the kinds of things um, that people read. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I don't read terms and conditions. And I think that that's uh, fatally flawed at the moment. Um, and actually, it's, it's quite a nice segue into the idea of funding, um, that if you are looking to raise funding right now, it's worth discussing your options uh, and what the possibilities are for your business. Um, there is always venture capital, but I know a lot of venture capitalists in South Africa, it's a very small industry, and I guarantee you very few of them are making investments now. Um, and the truth is if they are making investments, they're still capitalists, so they're very aggressive terms, um, very high interest rates, uh, it's just very aggressive. They're e either taking a big chunk of equity because they know you're desperate, or they're giving you a convertible loan that when you can pay them back, they convert at a much higher rate, so it's brutal. If you can avoid it, I would avoid raising funding um, altogether. Uh, a lot of people have asked me what they think about taking out credits or a loan from the bank. Um, I'm shit scared of that. I absolutely fundamentally do not like having debt. Uh, in the 13 businesses I've started since I was 16, I've never used my own money or a loan from a bank that would have put me personally bankrupt and never sell pers signed personal surety on any of the leases I've ever uh, signed for my previous businesses. You need to keep yourself out of debt as much as you can in these times um, because again, the terms are going to just be really brutal. Don't take out a mortgage on your a second mortgage on your home. Don't go and use your credit cards. If anything, start trying to pay your credit cards back off very slowly. There's no need to rush to pay your credit cards off. As long as you're contributing, that's fine. But do not take out personal debts to keep your business alive. I think that if that is where you're going, the brutal hard truth here is maybe you should consider shutting down, declaring bankruptcy, and seeing if you can start again. Use the next three or four weeks to see what you can do as a single individual to make up the salary that you were getting paid by your business. Um, so I would be cautious of taking out funding of any kind across the board. I think it's really dangerous right now um, and you'll feel pressure to do so and you feel like you need to do the right thing by your staff uh, and by your suppliers and your customers, but sometimes the right thing is just shutting down.
Yeah, exactly, Christopher. It's just, it's a deeper hole. Um, and I think this is, I mean, let's just forget that it's a time of lockdown, right? It's something that I've been saying for years about raising venture capital. And for, for very long in Silicon Valley, we've kind of glorified this idea of raising money and we celebrate it. And there's PR that goes out about how much money you've raised. The thing that most people who haven't raised money don't understand is that raising money is the start of pressure. It's the start of debt. Most venture capital firms work on a five-year spin around. So they're looking for at least 10 times their money in a five-year period. If you know that as an entrepreneur, you have to really believe that you're gonna raise money to keep your business afloat. And from today, April 10th, 2020, by 2025, you can give your investor 10 times their money. So if you raise a million, their exit needs to be for 10, their share, not the total exit, their share. That's how most VCs work. They're not looking for you for, uh, to just help you. They want money back. They've got investors behind them who also want to return and most of it is on a five year scale. It's very rare that it's longer, it's also very rare that it's shorter, um, but generally raising funding is a really difficult way to build a business in spite of thinking, oh yeah, it's easy and you get rich. You don't, it's not how it works, man. You give up your soul, you give up your company for funding that helps you grow. So I would be wary of funding altogether. Uh, I don't know about you guys. Uh, if, if you've had different experiences, let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm shit scared of funding at the moment after having done it for the last 15 years. Um, yeah, intense. So, then I think it's also interesting to, to start looking at the things your business used to need versus the things your business will need or does need right now. And I've actually been trying to talk about this to talk to this about uh, talk about this to people uh, in their personal lives too. And my favorite example is uh, your cars. Uh, I absolutely hate cars. I don't understand them. They get me from point A to point B. If I didn't have dogs, I would just use Uber. But I know a lot of people who spend an inordinate amount of money on cars because it makes them feel good, because other people look at them and go, oh, hey, that dude buys a Merc, cool. The question I have is, how do you feel now that your pretty little expensive car has been sitting, causing you nothing but debt? You can't drive it. No one can tell that you feel amazing in it. No one can see that you drive it. It's not safer than anything else right now. So are you thinking about the things you need personally and your business needs in the future? and you thought you needed a super expensive car, maybe you just need a super safe car. Um, so it's it's time now to start thinking about all of these things. Um, you know, I'm not saying go out and sell your car, but sure, you can do that. I, I would do that, but that's not what you have to do. In terms of um, the business, what I'm specifically interested in is what do you not need anymore? Do you no longer need an office? That might not be true. Everyone's talking as if that's gonna be the de facto result from now on. I fundamentally don't believe that. I think we're all gonna go back to our offices for a period and then we're gonna start an analyzing whether we need them in the future. Uh, the problem with offices and getting rid of them is offices, uh, remote work uh, is good when you've got the best people. And that applies to bosses as well as workers. If you have average people, they still need bums in seats to prove that you're doing your job. So that's not gonna change until we get rid of the average bosses and the average methods of checking how people exist. I think we judge people at the moment on attendance and that's fundamentally flawed. We need to be judging them on performance, but to judge people on performance, we need to have the right key metrics in place. We need to have the right goals in place. We also need to have the right bosses and leaders in place so that they know how to get the performance out of you. I mean, I know for many years in my my corporate career when I was short-lived at Vodacom and others, if I wasn't at work, I wasn't doing work. That's not changed. Corona hasn't changed that. We all think it has, but it hasn't. And I bet you that if you have staff, they think they need to now work more hours because they, you can't see them because we don't have clearly defined ideas of what this looks like. So it's important that you start analyzing, do you need offices? You may, but you may not. Um, there are lots of businesses I know who've gone, no, oh, we can save 50 grand a month if we just get rid of our offices. We're gonna do that from next week. Now that's intense because that means a lot of landlords are gonna suffer, but you know, that's how it goes. But little things like maybe you don't need three screens for every staff member. And um, there's a whole lot of people um, that can just do their jobs with less. I mean, I'm sitting here uh, in my bedroom on a chair that isn't a work chair with very little to do my job and I'm just doing it. Whereas six months ago, I was like, oh no, I need a proper chair and I need a desk and I need this. 
you don't need those things. And maybe you don't need all the salespeople you need. Maybe you need better people who can sell online. Uh, maybe you need fewer people who can sell offline. It's just so much that we could challenge that is the time now to sit and think, cool, let me review all the things my business needs. Let me go through my expenses and see if I can just chop out all these things. And then conversely, what can I add in? What can I add in to make my team feel better working remotely for the next three or four weeks? Maybe there is some online kind of voucher you can give them. Maybe there's a show you can buy for them. Maybe there's something you can add to their lives to make them feel part of this new culture because everything is different. The culture is different. The way people think about their jobs is different um, and job security is different. So you might need to give a little bit extra um, in that regard. Okay, what else do we have? Um, any questions, guys? Let's let's have one question. Christopher, if you've got like a, a camera and you want to join me on screen or anyone wants to join me on screen, let me know. Um, there is one question here from Steve. Uh, chatting to customers, how do you manage when they want a price decrease now during lockdown? That's interesting. Uh, Steve, maybe you want to type in what kind of business you're, you're, you're in. Um, like is it a service-based business? Is it a product business? Um, that that would help me a little bit in, in the thinking. But yeah, I think it's difficult. Um, I'm, I'm gonna indirectly answer that and come back to it. Um, okay, service-based and bill by the hour, cool. So I have a rule for friends and I'm sure you all that are listening to me today have got friends who want to use your services but always ask you for a discount. So I have a rule and it's FPFP, friends pay full price. My view is if you like me enough and you think my product is good enough, you should want to support my business so that it stays alive. Now, of course, we're in extraordinary times, but Steve, if your customers want you to still be around, then if you can offer them the full service offering while you're in lockdown, they should still be willing to pay for it. The way that I'm dealing with this kind of discount mentality right now is deferred income. So I would, if I were you, say to them, absolutely, I'm happy to put you on payment terms. You can pay me 75% of my normal rates now or on normal payment terms and the remaining 25% when we get back up uh, later. And you can kind of then lock away that revenue as future income. Uh, even on your books, it'll help make things look a bit better in terms of accounting and funding. Um, but I just I find that straight out discounts is a little bit too aggressive right now when we're all trying to survive. I think it's important that your customers realize that you're in the same boat that they're in. And I, yeah, I don't know, I think it's a, it's a tricky one, but just giving straight up discounts, I think doesn't really help kickstart and stimulate the economy that we're gonna need. Um, I think that that does more difficulty. So yeah, thanks. I think payment terms is definitely a better thing or deferred income is definitely better, a better way to go. Cool, so we've done that. Uh, man, customers get stuck in the discounts. Absolutely, Simon, like that's brutal. I, I learned that uh, in retail, that that discount cycle is what people come to expect. And we tried really hard at Nikari to never go on, on sale. But when you open physical stores and then everyone around you, literally 20 stores up and 20 stores down, they're all on sale. Your customers would literally not, they would rather not buy from you than actually buy at full price because they can go anywhere else and get a discount. So I think you kind of set the bar that, oh, okay, now I'm a remote company in this time of lockdown and I'm willing to give you a 50% discount. When you come out of the lockdown, they're gonna be like, but you could do the work at 50% off. What What's gonna change? Like, why can't I just carry on at the 50% off? So I would be very, very weary. I would much rather just defer that income and put them on payment terms or something to that effect. And I think the payment terms thing is a very underutilized routine here. You can talk to your suppliers and your the people you owe money to, and you can give them the same story. I mean, you can say, I'm absolutely happy to pay you, just give me 12 months. I'll pay you one twelfth of that every month for 12 months, and then see how you go. But I think the problem comes in when you shut down, um, force majeure, a lot of the big guys are gonna start pushing that in. We're just gonna have to try and get over that as small businesses and see if we can make it work. It's really tough. Okay. Um, are there any other questions? 
I, uh, I feel like I have been talking for 36 minutes. So uh, if there aren't any other questions, I do not want to bombard everyone with just a flood of information and be aggro and brutal and intense all the time. So um, it is Friday and it is nearly 2.30. It's past 2.30. So if there aren't any other questions, I think let's, let's wrap it up and we can catch up again next week, Friday. So the premise here is every Friday at 2 p.m., I'm going to be talking to whoever's here, even if it's one-on-one, -on -one, I don't mind. Um, and eventually we'll hopefully build this up to a good chunk of people. Um, but I'd love for you to join me every, every Friday at 2 p.m. Um, I'm going to, while we're here, just pop up the donate thing and let's, uh, if you feel like it, that's great. Um, if not, that's cool too. Um, I would also really appreciate, head to my website, it's nickharalambus.com um, and sign up to my newsletter, check out my latest book, um, put the book in there. It's how to build a side hustle um, and uh, you know, tell some friends who are thinking about building something, they can buy my book. Uh, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel there. Uh, everything is on my website. And I hopefully will be giving you the brutal, honest truth every Friday. Um, and yeah, we can catch up again next week. Thank you all so much for giving me your time. Like I know that it's intense right now. So I do appreciate you taking the time to sit with me for 30 minutes and just talk about your businesses. Spoo, great. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, the friends pay full price thing. Got to stick to the friends pay full price. Chris, good to chat to you, man. Happy to see you again. Thanks, guys. Spoo, maybe you want to think of some questions and next week bring them up too. Great. Looking forward to it, Spoo. Have a good weekend, everybody.